Zero. Now, one of the biggest uh, school groups in the country, indeed one of the biggest school groups in the Middle East, is Talim. And I'm delighted to welcome onto the programme their CEO, Alan Williamson, who has joined me in the studio. Alan, how are you? Good morning. Good morning, Georgia. A pleasure to be on the show and uh, good not to be on the business breakfast well, for a change because I didn't have to get up early. Well, exactly. <laughs> Although the business breakfast were here when you arrived and they got very excited. I was yeah. worried they might drag you into the studio for a prereq tomorrow morning, but I have captured you. It was good to catch up with you. Yes, it's fantastic to have you in again. Tell me, how did Talim do in the inspections this year? Yeah, we've had a fantastic year. Um, Very proud of all our schools. We've got six schools in Dubai and we went up in 85 indicators across the UAE framework that Fatma was just speaking about. I think the last time we were inspected, which was over three years ago, we went up in around 52. So a significant improvement in performance, Uh, particularly pleased with the Arabic and Islamic outcomes across our school, which is something Talim have always been proud of as a homegrown uh, organisation. And we moved up in a fantastic school called Greenfield International School. So it moved up from good to very good. So very proud of Lee Garvin and her staff. Is it tricky to make that transition from one standpoint to the next? Do you really have to change things in a school? Yeah, I mean, it's very clearly laid out by the KHDA and and, uh, Fatman and her team have done amazing to get around 200 schools uh, in this academic year. So you need to have 61% of the the 90 plus indicators at the next level. So good to very good, very good to outstanding. And then there are four key judgments, uh, teaching and learning, leadership, self-evaluation and student progress. If you manage to get those four uh, up, then, then you move the rating. So it's very, very transparent and clear. I think most schools group would say that the hardest jump is, is from very good to outstanding. Ah, that's so interesting. I mean, I remember when the inspectors were coming around my children's school and there's certainly quite a sort of tense atmosphere for the four days that they're in there. Is there a sort of, you know, are you fully aware of when the inspections are happening, basically? Yeah, of course you are. You get one week's notice. Um, um, I believe and I've always believed that the best schools are inspection ready at, at any time. The inspectors could drop in to a Talim school on, on any week and, and find fantastic teaching and learning. But, you know, without a doubt, it is something in the context of Dubai that schools are very aware of. And one of the fascinating things about this inspection, given three years uh, since we were inspected, is a lot of the school leaders and indeed a lot of the school teachers across Dubai, this will have been their first inspection. And and many of them are familiar with Ofsted in the UK, but, um, you know, that inspection week, I always call it your your cup final. It's it's what you've been playing for all year. That's really interesting, that sort of nerve-wracking sense of, you know, when you've got an inspector at the back of the classroom. I mean, did you notice anything different in the criteria this year? Do you feel like the inspectors were focusing on anything in particular? We heard Fatima there mention wellness. Is that a big deal in schools at the moment? Yeah, that was actually brought in by by Fatma Belarif and Dr Abdullah Karam. It's something that the KHDA have been very passionate about. Uh, um, it's, it's a worldwide uh, phenomenon, uh, student well-being Uh, At the moment, the issues with young people and mental health and and schools being very aware of that. So for the first time, we were graded on on well-being as well as student progress, student academics, etc. So I I, I think that's been very, very welcomed by the school community. Um, Certainly in our schools, uh, we we were a, a four is the top grading for that. In schools like Dubai British School, Emirates Hills and Jumeirah Park and Uptown, they they were all given a four and, of course, Greenfield that moved up. OK, so those with particularly good results, uh, as I mentioned in my queue, will be allowed to charge more fees. Are you expecting your schools to ask the KHDA if they can put their fees up? Uh, that's entirely down to the operator. You, you would have seen uh, and certainly was covered on the business breakfast that one of the large Indian schools groups didn't pass the, the, the percentage fee on. It's 3% given by the KHD plus the escalator for the schools that have moved from good to very good and very good to outstanding, as Fatma said, 25 
of them can go for the higher fee. Uh, Talim will will take a a decision on a school-by-school basis and what's right for us. One of the important decisions from our board is not to pass on the escalator to the Greenfield community. Um, You know, we we feel passionate about being empathetic towards our parents. Uh, Everybody is suffering from uh, the challenges of inflationary pressure. Uh, But we certainly will be putting the 3% on the vast majority of our portfolio. I was listening to GEMS before uh, for exactly the same reason. Dubai wants to keep the strongest teachers. Talim want to keep the strongest teachers uh, in terms of delivering outstanding education. And, you know, in order to meet the inflationary pressures and uh, the, the, the salary increase of teachers, which interestingly Talim have put on for the past two years. So we took the decision to do that even before the fee increase uh, and we'll continue our commitment to our teachers. I have to say that competition for good teaching staff must be um, getting sort of quite hot, it, particularly because over in the United Kingdom, for example, even in the state schools, teachers have now managed to negotiate a slight pay rise, only 4%, it has to be said. You recruit quite a lot of your teachers from the United Kingdom. Do you think that type of thing will have a, a knock-on effect globally, you know, in international markets for teachers? Yeah, I mean, it's well documented in education and business literature that there is a so-called teacher recruitment crisis. As you said, we go to London and Washington to recruit American, Canadian, British teachers. In all honesty, Georgia, uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi for us help greatly in selling um, a lifestyle and and you've got to remember that the schools in Dubai and Abu Dhabi are truly fantastic. Mm -hmm. They're amazing places to work. Uh, As Talim grows, we are also offering professional development for our teachers. For example, one of our principals actually came in as a classroom teacher and has worked through assistant head teacher, deputy head teacher and right up to head teacher and principal. So as an organisation leverages size, we, we, we have benefits from that. Yeah, nice package, I have to say. And plus, of course, the teachers get paid tax-free, which is never a bad it's thing. It's always a good thing. <laughs> it's always a good thing. Thank you so much for coming to join us in the studio. Really fantastic to talk through uh, Talim's success in the school inspection results this year. Lovely to have you join us. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be on. Thank you very much indeed. Alan Williamson there, the CEO of one of the UAE's biggest school groups, but not just the UAE, one of the Middle East's biggest school groups, Talim. Lovely to have you join us right here on the agenda on Dubai 103.8.